Stephen A said, what? First question came from my guy Stone two times. He said, I ain't graven. Hope all is well with you and your family. Today, I was watching Stephen A talk about the Ravens, and I think the media is finally starting to understand what us Ravens fans have been saying for four years now, which is to get Lamar more weapons. My question to you is, well, first off, let's talk about what Stephen A was saying, because he was having a, a conversation with uh, Keyshawn Johnson, and I... Love this conversation. I know a lot of times Stephen A. Smith be saying some outlandish stuff about literally everybody, but I appreciated this back and forth between Keyshawn Johnson and Stephen A. Smith so much. I would normally put the video to it in this video, but the last video that I put up about Peyton Manning talking about Greg Roman, the NFL, they found it and they said, Hold up there, buddy! What you doing using our stuff, man? But so anyway, um, watch it for yourself. But Steven, they were having a healthy debate, a healthy back and forth. Keyshawn Johnson was talking about, hey, Ravens running the ball and playing great defense. That's who they are. That's their philosophy. And Stephen A. Smith was saying, well, yeah, that is who they are. But he said, this and, you ain't had Ray Lewis in a while. You ain't had Air Reid in a while. Um, and he said, back then with those guys, you could count on those guys to deliver on defense for you and you could win because of them, even if your offense was lackluster. But he said now, he said, it's been a while. He said, it's been a while. And the Ravens have not had that success in the playoffs. So he said they need more from their offense. And he said, Lamar needs more help. And he talked about them adding weapons. And Keyshawn Johnson was like, well, that's, that's not what they do. They brought up Odell Beckham Jr. Keyshawn Johnson was like, Odell Beckham Jr. ain't going to no Ravens, as we all already know. And maybe by the time you see this video, maybe he will be wherever he's going to be at. Uh, no, nah, probably not. But anyway, like, they, it, I, I, just watch it for yourself because I, I loved their conversation. Anyway, he said, number one, who's a receiver that's going to be a free agent this year that you'd like to see the Ravens sign this offseason? I, I don't know who's going to be a free agent. I honestly don't. Um, I would obviously love DeAndre Hopkins. Y'all know that's my guy. Um, I, I just, I, I don't th the philosophy is what the philosophy is. Keyshawn Johnson was spot on with that one. The, their philosophy is their philosophy, and that's what it's going to be. Like, whether people like it, whether people don't like it, whether people think it needs to be updated, or whether people think it needs to stay the same, whatever it is, that's who they are. These Ravens are who they are. They're, they're from the top. That's where it's coming from, the philosophy. And they, it seems like they're going to continue to stick with it. So, okay. So, as far as expectations for receiver this and receiver that, my expectations are low. I don't think the Ravens are going to go out and make some splash move for some receiver because they don't value that. That's not who they are. They've never been that way. I know some people, some people are like, oh, well, it's Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson doesn't throw to the receivers. He doesn't use them. He throws to only the tight ends. Who has he had out there like that? And again, this whole receiver thing, this ain't just from Lamar. This has been a Flacco thing to that. Ravens, it's their philosophy, man. It's their philosophy. So that, that, that's what it is. And then he said, um, number two, who's the receiver you like the Ravens to select this upcoming draft? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, now you hold up there, buddy. Stone two times. I ain't watched not one single draft prospect yet. We still in the regular season in NFL. I ain't been messing with no college football, man. But so I, I can't answer that one at all. But then number three, he said, who's the receiver you would like to see the Ravens trade for next season? Oh, yeah, we're talking dream scenarios now. Yeah, that's DeAndre Hopkins all day for me. Um, any other ones? Uh, Tyreek Hill, he would be a great one. Now, I, I know that's unrealistic. I know that ain't going to happen. Um, Devontae Adams, he's getting close to, to being 30, so <laughs> Ravens might start looking, but no. Nah. Um, who else? I don't even know, man. I don't even know. I'm just uh, I'm so wrapped up in this season right now and, and, and just seeing how it goes with everything. I haven't even really been thinking about next year too much yet. Um, but I guess, I mean, according to my guy Stone two times, he said, ain't never too early to think about it. But anyway, he said, uh, thanks for all the great content and keep up the good work. You're a bright spot in a lot of people's day. And we're very thankful to be able to watch your videos daily. Hey, I appreciate that, Stone, man. Thank you. Hey, man, you almost made me about, about to cry in this video. I ain't trying to cry too many videos, man. I be crying enough already, man. But I, I appreciate y'all a lot. I appreciate you a lot uh, for this message, and, and thank y'all. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven.
Next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, "Hey, Graven, I'm happy to be a patron now, so you can read every one of my questions and comments." I told y'all we we do like 99.99 percent of all the emails that get sent to. But if you're a patron, you can send it directly on Patreon. And, and I mean, speaking of the Team Keep It Clean patrons, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. If any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to Patreon.com/slash Engraven Vids. It's all down below in the description. You don't have to. And shout out to the Team Keep It Clean channel members as well. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean channel member, so you get a nice little star next to uh, your name in the comment section of every single video or every single live stream, that's cool too. You, you can become a, a, a Team Keep It Clean channel member by clicking the join button. Um, but anyway, thank you all. My, back to my guy Kevin's question. He said, uh, I told you we needed to give Owe less snaps because he's the only pass rusher not balling. I don't know what's been going on with him. You know what was crazy? Um... I remember towards the end of the game, because um, I, as far as like personnel and stuff, when I'm watching live, like when we're doing our live streams and stuff, I don't always be noticing that stuff because I'm watching the game. I ain't looking for like, oh, is all way out here or not? But he wasn't even out there. And I was like, oh, yikes. Like, especially like at, in a time when he's supposed to be helping close it out. Is really oof. Anyway, he said if Ajabo is just twenty percent better than Oa, which I think he's going to be way better than that, then you have to super you have a super deadly pass rush with great linebacker and an awesome secondary. The Ravens are built for the cold playoffs. The only thing that can stop them <laughs> The only thing that can stop them is offensive play calling and not using every single weapon on offense. They do not use Mike Davis in the absence of Gus, and they need to use Devin DuVernay and Kenyon Drake the same once Gus and J.K. come back. Yeah, well, Mike Davis, nah, they, they don't use him at all. I told, ever since the Dolphins game. They tried to run him in the Dolphins game, I think, like two or three times. Dolphins said, no, this dude ain't running for nothing on us. Ravens ain't looked back since. They ain't looked back since. So, anyway, he said, I'm saying that so on offense to use your best players. Right, that's, that should be. A collective effort and lean on your defense. Yeah. I mean, that's how it should be. And this defense is definitely one that you can rest a shoulder on. Um, so the offense, yeah, use your best players, put your best players in the best, best position to have success and go all out. Next question came from my guy, Steven. He said, hey, what's up, bro? Hope you and the family are doing well. Well, what's up with Andy Isabella? <laughs> you know just as much as I do. We, get, we don't hear anything. Every single practice report, nothing. Every single report, we don't, we don't hear a thing about Andy Isabella at all. Like, at all. But now that I think about it, but with Deshaun Jackson, we heard about him. I guess because he got put on the injury report. He got designated with an injury. So I guess they, they had to report him. So, but now that I'm thinking about it, we don't, we don't ever hear anything about Tyler Beatty, Benjamin Victor, because they're on the practice squad. Um, but even still. Well, I guess they're healthy on and on the practice squad, so that's not well, that's why they're not listed on the injury report. But still, we don't hear nothing about him. Ravens, they they signed this dude and just he's been a blank. This question came from my guy Jay Fire. He said, "Hey, Graven, uh, happy Thanksgiving or late Thanksgiving, whenever this gets to you." Oh no, Thanksgiving it's, it's just a regular day for me. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but we we thankful every single day uh, out of the year. Um, but I, I appreciate you, man. He said, uh, "Hope you enjoy some good food and time with the fam." Oh yeah, we do that on a regular. We do that on a regular. We ain't got to just do it in November, baby. We do that on a regular, baby. You, like, you, oh, you can't see this belly right now because it's like down below. But yeah, this, this thing is real deal, man. Uh, but anyway, he said, um, here's my question. Uh, what are you thankful for about the Ravens this year? And what hope do you have for our immediate Ravens future? Thanks again for what you do for the flock. And you have a fantastic and tremendously blessed day. I, I appreciate that, Jay. Fire! Um, I mean... The Ravens always make football fun. They make it fun. Um, they make it stressful, uh, but they make it fun. We have a lot of fun watching Ravens football. So I, I'm, I'm glad that they do that uh, for us. Um, they, uh, they, this season specifically, I mean, they're they seven and three. So they've won more than half of the games that they lost. And even in the games that they lost, they had double digit leads and Remember back then, like, it was like, man, who are these Ravens? These are the Ravens that have built up a big lead, and then they'll lose it. They were very inconsistent, but they've been building up consistency. And I know the, um, the quality of teams that they've been going up against recently has dropped. But, hey, I ain't complaining because you still got to take care of business regardless of who you're going up against. Um, but so Ravens, could they got to ride it out. They could ride it out. And then um, come playoff time, yeah, the quality is going to go way up. But anyway, uh, oh, you said, what do you have – what hope do you have for our immediate Ravens future? 
Super Bowl. Simple as that. Next question came from Speed Killer. He said, which teams do you think should trade for Lamar or which teams would be great for him and which head coaches would get the best out of him if he leaves? Mm. See, a lot more people have been asking this question. I think people trying to like prepare themselves for if and when that happens. If it if it does happen, hopefully it doesn't, but yeah, we'll see. Um, I think the Bucks would be a good team for him, especially just with the weapons that they got. That's what I, I just really want to see. Wherever Lamar ends up, whether it's with the Ravens or with another team, I just want to be. I want to see him surrounded with wep with high quality weapons because he just he hasn't had that like that with the Ravens. And again, it, that's just their philosophy or whatever. But I will. I, that's what I want to see. I, I want to see Lamar the, the the potential be maxed. I want to see it be reached, be tapped into like crazy. Because with the Ravens, that's not that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. Um, so, but which teams? I, I, I did say the Bucks. Um, again, we talked about this before. Tua trying to make sure that Lamar don't go to Miami because I think it will it would be great there. I think with I, I they I know they got Trey Lance, but with the 49ers, the way that they um the weapons that they got and the way that they scheme stuff too. They they scheme stuff to get their different playmakers involved, and they they do a lot based off a of yak. They set their guys up to get good yak. Um, so forty nine, I know it's not gonna happen. Forty nine ers will be a good one. Um, mm, who else? Who else? Who else? Ooh, that's a tough question off the top of my head. Um, that's the only ones I can think of off the top of my head right now. So I'll say Bucks, Dolphins. Even though Dolphins are a little shaky right now, because two two have been balling, man. Um, and yeah, the 49ers, but again, 49ers, they won't happen. And last question on this episode came from my boy Antonio. He says, success with wide receivers when Andrews is out. Hey, man, I'm new to the channel. Love the work you are doing. Oh, I appreciate it, Antonio. He said, what are your what are your opinion on when Andrews has been out of the game? Have you noticed this makes Greg Roman spread the ball around? And I would say it was successful, uh, Bengals and Panthers. So I wish Greg would keep doing this even when Andrews is back. Maybe less targets, but might keep Lamar in a rhythm and get this offense moving how we want, how we want it. What do you think? Now, yes, spreading the ball around is up to Greg Roman, but it's also up to Lamar Jackson as well. It's not all on Greg Roman because Greg Roman could dial up a nice play, but if Lamar doesn't see or doesn't even look for the receiver, then it doesn't mean anything. So it's up to both of them. Um, it's, both, it's up to Greg Roman to call the stuff and for Lamar to execute it. Now, the uh, reason why he gives it to Mark Andrews so much is because Mark Andrews is his most reliable and his best weapon, his best target. Um, now, we've seen it since... Mark Andrews has been back that the ball has been spread around. Like we saw it in the last game now, there were some drops because really on that first drive, it was going, the ball was going everywhere. Mark Andrews, I think he caught a couple passes, but he had a drop. But, uh, he caught a couple passes. Pat Ricard he, on that wheel route, he had it, but he dropped it. Um, James Prochet, he had it, but he dropped it. Um, I think there was another drop too, then likely he'd be dropping and whatnot. So the ball is still being spread around. Um, but we just and then of course Demarcus Robinson had he went what nine for nine on he he had he was targeted nine times had nine catches for like 129 yards something like that but Demarcus Robinson he had himself a game um, so we've still been seeing it even upon Mark Andrews return that the ball has been being spread out um, so it's just a matter of consistency at this point. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.